Um, I'm basically, you know, I'm basically pretty much sell bias uh, going into tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of names that I like that, that are really mirroring the NASDAQ 100. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, just a quick update. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. It is uh, Tuesday. Okay, excuse me, it is Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day. Um, quick update, and then I have to go to my son's uh, basketball game, so I wanna kind of wrap this up pretty, uh, pretty quickly. So uh, QQQ, uh, we've been talking about this potential roundabout top several days. Uh, yesterday, we finally saw the aggressive pull of um, the really, really aggressive big runners uh, over the last month and a half, two months or so. And the biggest biggest takeaway from yesterday's sessions, like, like we talked about in the video, yesterday was the first close uh, below the five-day moving average since right over here uh, in October. Now, the question was, what we're going to do today? Are we going to confirm the five-day and move to the 10 and obviously going to set us up for the rest of the week? And that's exactly what happened. We confirmed uh, the five-day moving average, and this is now the first close uh, below the 10-day moving average uh, all the way. It's kind of a pretty big here. The first time we close the 10, because if you follow this like snake, uh, first time we close below the 10 day moving average since uh, September the 13th. And if you believe in the theory, again, uh, every single night, we kind of break down uh, technical analysis into kind of baby steps. If you believe stocks trade from supply to supply, then again, you have to believe the stocks trade from demand to demand. And now, instead of like we talked about yesterday, there was only two, three dollars on the queues to the 10 day moving average. Now, this is the first close in a very, very long time below the 10 day moving average. And now we have uh, measured potential all the way down to this uh, 384, uh, 385 level. So you're talking about another five, five, and a half, five and a half points on the queues. So if you looked at what happened yesterday, it was isolated. There was still a lot of names that were very, very strong. Today, everything got taken down for the exception of Tesla. We'll get to that uh, in a second. But it was really, really uh, impressive the way that a lot of the names that had big, big runs, there were really not uh, not that many uh, attempted rallies today. And the most important part of any potential pullback or any further potential pullback, always remember that the breakout of the market started right around here. So is it very possible we get back, ultimately have a hard landing spot somewhere around the 375 area? Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. It, it, would, it would make sense. Uh, it would reset a lot of stocks. It would be a healthy, uh, uh, a healthy distribution, um, kind of a rest area for the market. And as what we talked about, uh, you know, several days ago when this first roundabout top started happening, we talked about, you know, this is not a, a scenario of we're going to go back to uh, last month, uh, March lows. This is just basically a healthy reset. Let the stocks kind of get their uh, wind beneath their sails, kind of get their feet uh, underneath them, and then we'll start. A pretty much an aggressive rally back uh, towards the end of the fourth quarter, uh, start of the first quarter. But first, we have some steps uh, in front of that. Um, I'm basically, you know, I'm basically pretty much sell bias uh, going into tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of names that I like that that are really mirroring the Nasdaq 100. Uh, first close uh, below the 10. That's the theme, right? That's the theme. So when you're charting tonight and you go through the NASDAQ 100, just go through, it'll take you three to five minutes to go through through the NASDAQ 100. Any stock that closed below the five-day moving average or below the 10-day moving average, which I call uh, the birth of the trade to the upside, that means it's, well, the birth of the trade to the downside. So if you have that theory, if we confirm today's uh, price action, again, we, have, we lost about 1.6% on the NASDAQ, but if we do confirm, we still have a, you know five, five and a half points down, and that will reflect a lot of you know pretty pretty good technical damage on a lot of really good high flying names that recently had superb performance, and now it's just time to kind of get them to you know to kind of reset a little bit 
on some back tests. But instead of just sitting there waiting for them to reset kind of on the bottom of the, or the range here, um, you know, we're going to take advantage. And that's the whole point. We're going to be prepared like we were yesterday, like we were the day before. And, you know, for the last couple of days, we still saw really good opportunities on the long side. The only one that I see is a small channel here on Tesla uh, that we're going to get into tomorrow in, in, in morning strategy in the webinar. But uh, other than that, everything is pretty much the downside. And if you, if you, if you take this mirror image of the queues, start looking, right? Start looking uh, um, at names that kind of mirror what we're seeing in the queues. And if you do so, you'll see a lot of really good uh, setups for tomorrow. You got Qualcomm, really, really big uh, move uh, from earnings, first close below the five day moving average. Again, this thing confirms. And again, nobody's saying Qualcomm is going to go down to 150, but you know, you could get a pretty good move all the way back to the bottom of the range here to fill in some of this uh, earnings gap. When you look, for example, on a name like Zillow, right, had really, really bad earnings. Uh, attempted the dead cat bounce the last couple of days, especially if the NASDAQ 100 comes in. This is a member of the NASDAQ 100, I believe so. Uh, anyway, so I'm watching the bottom of the range here, uh, the bottom of the earnings low. If this is the bottom of the earnings low starts uh, getting, you know, starts getting hit, you know, you could get a, you know, you could get a 10% move, you know, 10% initial move uh, to the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, name like Microsoft, which I love, right? Which I love. It had a phenomenal run. But again, we're just looking at the, the you know, the, the same setups over and over and over again. Uh, first close today below the five, first close below the 10. And if Microsoft, and if Microsoft confirms, it's seven to 10 points of downside as well. Uh, names like Netflix that, you know, started its decline uh, a little bit earlier than a lot of names are still sitting in this bottom channel here and if you know things implode uh, you could get a big move as well so there's a lot of names uh, that are going to give us a lot of value for tomorrow in a perfect world what I'd love to see I would love to see the market gap up tomorrow okay I'd love to see all these names that I'm kind of watching get stuffed into 60 minute supply, go green to red, and start really taking down uh, today's channels. Like I said sometimes, technical analysis is not very, it shouldn't be subjective, okay? You should have a really decisive, uh, really decisive view of the market going into the next trading day. Sometimes it could be tricky because sometimes channels are so tight, right? There's a lot of uh, contraction in channels, but here's pretty, you know, a pretty clean view. Like yesterday, I had a pretty clean view of what I wanted from today. First close below the five, now first close below the 10. So I believe uh, the value that is definitely going into uh, tomorrow to the downside into the technology space. Can something wake up like a Tesla? Absolutely. Uh, had a wild ride today from up, from down 15 to up 70, to go red, to close up 60, just a crazy, crazy move uh, today in Tesla. You know, the, you know, the question is, did, did Elon sell his stock? Did he not sell his stock? Again, it doesn't make a difference. If you're a trader of this market, you have to just appreciate the channels, appreciate the average shoe range, and the capabilities that you can't put into play on both sides of the market. Other than that, uh, again, you don't have to be uh, very creative going into tomorrow's session. Um, you know, if we go, right, reject into supply, go red, and the channel is confirmed to today's lows, I think we're going to have a day two uh, waterfall. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. I'm sorry for keep cutting it short. I'm just running up against the clock. My son has a game. Dad life uh, takes precedence over anything. I just wanted to make sure I get you guys kind of in the right frame of mind uh, going into tomorrow's session. Guys, God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.